um, glazing this Triceratops pendant with black glaze and I thin it down with water quite a bit to where it runs like watercolor and just wash it over all the textures and then pull back anything that I want to be highlighted and then I'll clean it off the high points and that's why I like to carve that um, lino print to make it have a, a nice texture that helps to define where the glazes uh, really flow and accumulate. Um, so I'm just moving the thin down glaze around here uh, just to enhance the shading. So I'm just removing some of the black glaze with this sponge tool to enhance the highlights. So I forgot about filming here for a minute and I uh, already had painted on most of this jade green glaze, which uh, the important thing is that I let that black glaze fully dry uh, there might be a, a little tiny bit of moisture still there, but it was basically dry to the touch. And then that means that it's um, not going to move around really, even though I'm um, painting another layer of glaze up on top of it. And so um, you could just kind of see it through the glaze anyways right now. But this jade green glaze is translucent. So I should be able to see all this detail that I did with the black glaze through the green glaze. And then I'll do a couple more layers on this um, later on. But um, I'm kind of doing a similar technique to what I did with the black, but uh, lay it on quite a bit heavier because this is really uh, the actual coat that, of glaze that I'm putting on there and just almost to as if it was the skin. Where I use the black glaze um, almost like watercolor and then kind of just stained it in the recesses. This I'm, I'm painting on um, without thinning it down. I thin it just slightly more than it, how it comes from um, out of the container but um, just enough so that it paints on evenly not like to make it watery so I could get enough of a coat um, that it'll actually have some substance to it because uh, I don't want it to be like transparent I want it to be almost uh, this luminous skin on the on the uh, surface over the top of the black. I am painting the horns blue and it's a similar uh, translucent glaze to the jade green um, but it's uh, this kind of a robin's egg blue color that I really like um, but my technique with it is just um, because each of these little horns is a, a little concave section that I just fill in uh, using the surface tension of the liquid to uh, help it conform to the shape and um, that way I can be like pretty accurate it, and so that's where I start in the, very, in the very center and then just like work that little drip um, out to fill just where I want it. Um, this was a little small brush and then uh, I might, it'll, after it dries it'll um, sink down and then I might add a second coat because I want them to be pretty bold. So, I drank some coffee, really sped up, uh, shaking all over the place there, and then uh, when I'm 
doing here on this next little bit is cleaning anything that went over the edge uh, with that sponge again. But uh, yeah, this whole process takes a little while. So what I'm painting on here on this next part is this uh, purple glaze that is also a little translucent, but it paints on a pinkish color. And um, I'm hoping that it'll add as kind of a shade, a shadow effect, um, and give that a even more lively depth. And I even added a little bit of some dots in here as if there was some like freckling going on but there's also little black dots that are underneath the green glaze so hopefully when it's all finished it'll really have like a a lively uh, look to it i'm <clears throat> able to paint this on uh, with it thinned down quite a bit almost as thin as the black uh, because i've got that coat of um, the jade green glaze um, fully coating it separating the black glaze uh, from this purple glaze and um, so I'm able to really make it more of a shadowed watercolor effect um, in the way that I'm painting it on uh, and it, unless it's not overly um, translucent it should look great but it might be so translucent that it doesn't really show up too much I have not tried this purple over the green and so I don't know if it's going to be brown or purpley green who knows right here I'm putting clear on its eye just to give it a glossy sheen like it's got uh, tears on its eye and it really reflective and this is that uh duncan clear and it ha and it's green when you put it on i almost wished that the green color was the color that the eye was going to be after i saw it but um i think it'll look uh, pretty good with a little bit of clear on its eye So here I am right at the top of the glaze firing and I had a pretty good result um, before bringing it up to 1850 for 10 minutes at the top end before it cools down and so my scut here just has a dial and then so right there we're at 1845 is probably good enough but just to let it soak to know that it's fully smoothed out I think if I go too hot that it loses some color so I don't want to go too hot and it just jumped over it for a second but that's fine so I'm actually going to uh, let it start cooling down and in order for it to hopefully not cool too fast, it is cooling pretty fast, but these are small things. They don't really have too much thermal shock issues or anything, but I'm going to leave it on uh, two on the dial, which brought up to 900 or 1,000 overnight, but um, it'll drop that this 700 over a course of a couple hours back to about a thousand then I'll turn it down to low then I'll turn it off if it's cold enough in here I won't have to crack it for it to drop the last couple hundred degrees um, fairly quick because it's so small um, larger kiln 
Might be able to shut it off and let the residual heat keep it from dropping in temperature too fast. But um, just in order to keep the glaze from cracking, um, just in order to have it be a little more resilient uh, in case you drop it or whatever and be a little stronger. So cooling down, it's still 370 degrees and um, I'm reading it in Fahrenheit. I don't know why everybody uses uh, Celsius for um, ceramics, so I should probably just get used to it. But um, it's definitely really hotter than you want it to be to look at these, but I might as well look at it and see what it looks like. So there we are. Wow, that other one's really bright. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and close it and then let it have a little bit of time. Actually, I might put something in there so that it does cool off within the next hour or two. Really, you don't want to go too much faster than 100 degrees an hour. So it'd take like three hours really to open it, but um, eh, you'd probably fudge it as small as those are. So it's at 170 degrees and that's what I was saying. I put a little chunk of clay in it to crack the door open a little to let the air out um, just to speed up the cooling process a bit. Um, so I mean, let's see, if, is it hot to the touch at that temperature really? Warm, but not too bad. Um, yeah, that's cool looking, wow. Um, yeah, it's almost more watercolory than I expected. I almost wish it was a little brighter. Um, anyways, wow, okay. And then this one, so I'm doing some um, pendants that are just like an abstract. Uh, it's for a necklace. That one's pretty wild. And then uh, my friend made this like a native um, feather, eagle feather. And then I uh, just doing an experiment, some other, I was gonna fill the gla uh, whole kiln, but I just wanted to fire these and see how they turned out before I glazed anything else. And this was, funny enough, uh, just kind of rolled a, a coil and then used the bottom of my shoe to make this print. Um, but anyways, this thing turned out great, huh? 